Hey everyone, welcome into the channel. So this morning I was getting ready, just a quick get ready to get out of the house and I realized that the lighting in my bathroom might be good enough to where I don't have to set up a ring light or a light in the house to be able to make this intro. I'm like, oh, I could double duty. I could get ready and talk to everybody while I get ready. So today is Tuesday and we're gonna head out to go thrifting together. We're also gonna do a little bit of pulling shipping in the basement. I had really good sales lately and um, the uncle Sam blow mold sold a little teaser so I was really happy that those sold if you watched my video probably about two months ago I picked up two Uncle Sam blow molds I think it was about two months ago all right I'm gonna finish getting ready so you can see I am in the primary bathroom this lighting isn't bad all right hit that like and subscribe button we're going thrifting together just in the door and I spotted this tote bag which is just lovely but $9.99 oh I'm on the fence about it I would like this for me now when I look at tote bags and handbags I always think about the weight because I carry so much camera equipment besides all the normal stuff that yeah I don't want to be carrying something on my shoulder that's like 50 pounds but boy is that nice if this was $4.99 I would take it it looks to be really well made and I don't see any staining or any of the little the little rope things broken oh, oh goodwill all right I'm gonna leave that one let's take a quick look at the handbags now I'm not doing a lot of handbags. Lately I've been picking up a few, which I will probably sell in the booth. Selling handbags online, I don't know, there's a lot of issues with it. Other buyers can report you if they feel like your thing is not genuine, even if it is genuine, and then you get a Vero. I don't know, eBay system is a little bit crazy in my opinion. So I have a tendency to stay away from handbag selling on eBay, but, um, but in the booth, you know, that would be okay, or on Facebook Marketplace. All right, I'm not seeing anything all that spectacular. I always look for leather, um, you know, in brands that I know that are nicer. I like finding a real Tory Burch. Coach is okay, very saturated. Once Coach opened outlets, <laughs> in my opinion, it was all downhill from there, but it did make it more affordable for people to have a Coach bag, so that was good. Okay, is this leather? The other day when I was thrifting here, I saw a woman get a leather um, duffel bag. It was beautiful quality. I was so happy for her. If I can't have something, I want somebody else to grab it so it doesn't get thrown out or brought to the landfill. I'm sure a lot of the handbags here that don't sell do get sent to other countries. I don't think they get thrown out because the shipping is quite easy for handbags. Well, that's interesting, but it is cheaper quality. Look at this little jelly purse. What? I don't know that I've ever seen a jelly purse. Have you guys seen a jelly purse like this? Oh, I see a branding in it. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. Okay, no branding on that inner tag, and I feel like the quality is good, but the way that tag is attached tells me this is probably not something that's, you know, super expensive. All right, I'm going to leave that behind. It did catch my attention, though. I look at handbags the same way I look at belts. I look by feel to see how the quality is. All right. No handbags that I'm really just falling in love with or excited to pick up. We are dangerously going down the pillow mishmash aisle. This aisle also will have wallpaper sometimes. I thought for a second this might be grass cloth, but it's not. It's a vinyl wall covering. So I don't think we're going to go with that. Let's take a look. Oh, see some rugs here. What are these about? Now, most times I won't pick up pre-owned rugs. Oh, these are 
Leora Mann, I think. This is the black dog surfing. That's not what it's called. What price do they have on this? $6.99. I'm going to open these up. I think they're both the same. And $6.99. I'm going to open these up. These would do very well in the booth. Now, new, I'm going to guess probably between $80 and $100. And they do look new. They don't look like they've been used at all. But I'm going to open these up. These might be a good score. I might be able to get maybe 35 to 50 per rug. So we're going to go ahead and grab those. That was a really good find. Very, very grateful. The music is not loud today. It just makes my whole world easier. Oh, somebody started a project. I do like those colors. Um, I don't think it's finished. So, yeah, I don't have time for crocheting. But isn't that pretty? Really pretty. That's that ombre I was talking about, where it goes from lighter to darker in the same color um, shades and pattern. All right, what else do we have? We have an umbrella, which I'm not allowed to open in this store, because you guys will all get upset. <laughs> I kind of never understood that opening an umbrella in the store, that it was bad luck. I don't know why. I don't know who came up with that. Oh, what do we have here? It's a little cross. Okay, $6.99 each. Cross gold mini. $2.99. I wouldn't get much for that, but I do like that. All right, what else do we see? We have some placemats that look to be a fruited tapestry. We don't want those. All right, let's scan pillows and see if there's anything jumping out. Now, generally, I don't buy pre-owned pillows. I have on rare occasion where I really felt like they were wonderful or I just bought them for the cover and I was able to get rid of the um, inside, the insert, and I washed the cover. I have done that before. But generally, that's too much work. Oh, we have some greeting cards up here. All right. I think that's it for this aisle. We didn't see anything else, did we? I don't think so. We have some fabric down there, but it doesn't look like a big enough piece or interesting enough to look at. Okay, we are going down the dishes on one side and the baskets on the other side aisle. This bowl always tricks me. I always think this is margarine based and for Hallmark, but it's Falls Graph. Those patterns are very close. I'm surprised that one of them didn't get copyrighted. I also see the uh, casserole dish down here. Again, false graph. I have a tendency not to pick up any false graph at all. I could be missing out on the few items that do bring good money, but yeah, just can't do everything. It's a little wood rabbit. Did somebody make that? It's signed. Okay, I have to draw the line somewhere. <laughs> I think I remember looking this type of dish up. These are beautiful. Why aren't these worth more? I don't know who made this. $1.99, I always feel tempted to pick them up because I think they're just lovely. And you know, I really don't like glass, like clear glass or colored glass. Just not my thing, but that is so pretty. I'm actually gonna put it in the cart and think about it because it's only $2. All right, just do it, just do it. And look at this gorgeous, gorgeous casserole dish. Uh, I am my own worst enemy. Let me move things around so I don't wind up breaking anything. Okay, this is stunning. I'm thinking this is probably like Bavaria or Czechoslovakia, something like that. You know, it's bad enough having blurry vision, but then when they do the stamp blurry, <laughs> that's not helping me. Look how beautiful that is. That is gorgeous. What would I want served in that? I'm thinking scalloped potatoes. $3.99. Oh, it's so pretty. But I can't buy just because something's pretty. And I don't know if anybody's really using this kind of thing. Oh, you know what would be gorgeous? To, to take the top off and put a plant in it. You would miss all the beautifulness of this, though. But I really like that. All right, is this... This doesn't look like... Um, Old Country Roses, Royal Albert. That looks like a copy. It's not very well done. I have to say, being all critical about somebody's work. Oh, this is a very big glass apple. Not very heavy, though. All right, 
right, what else do we see? Now every time I see glass that's not especially good, I think it's Princess House because I learned that brand term and yeah, I'm like, oh, is that Princess House? I do see dishes down here, these bowls. And I think I saw the plates further down somewhere. I don't know where I saw them. I like this pattern. But again, I can't buy things. This is um, Taylor Smith or Smith Taylor. Yeah, boy, those are nice. All right, why, why won't stuff like that come, come in fashion? Yeah, really like those, very pretty. Oh, these are the dishes. Is this dwarf pine? Remember those pink dishes I sold? Mine were pink though. And these are white, but I think this is dwarf pine, mid-century modern. But I'm gonna leave those because they're not pink. So I guess when it comes right down to it, a lot of companies did pine cones. <laughs> this is French Saxon China. That is very pretty. I still like the pink ones better, but that's kind of cool. All right, I think we were supposed to be going down the baskets aisle, weren't we? How did we wind up on China? I don't know. I don't know what's happening. Dishes, which I don't do a lot of dishes. Here are some rooster dishes. Those are kind of cool if you have like a farmhousey. Oh, false scrap. I didn't say that. <laughs> you caught me liking false scrap. How could that possibly be? Look at all the false scrap. I should look this up. You know, I just, I can't even. Today's not the day. That is pretty. That is very pretty. Who's making that? It almost looks like it should have been in this collection. This is Cynthia Rowley. I think this is older. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Okay, I can't start picking up things just because they're pretty. I have to know that they're gonna sell for good money. Good money. Any, any kind of profit is good money, as long as it's worth my time. All right, what other dishes? What other cups? What other things are we seeing? I see a picture frame. That's like a resin. Oh, a pumpkin platter. Hmm. All right, I think I'm getting away unscathed, not picking up any dishes, thank goodness. We are finally coming down the baskets aisle. And I'm gonna grab these two baskets. Well, first let me see how much they want for them. $5. I'm thinking this is probably Pier 1, maybe. I don't know. I don't think Pier 1 is ever marked, like, on the metal. I think it's always a sticker. But for $5 each, they're kind of like a Chinese lantern shape. I really, really like these. I'm thinking I could probably get 12 to 15 each. So that's not a bad find. Oh, I almost thought that was a bird's nest. <laughs> I'm all about the little things lately. All right, do we see any other baskets? Mm, not on this aisle. All right, just as we were talking about baskets, a new cart got rolled out, and this basket for $4.99 was in there. Seems like people might have had a potted plant in it. This is lovely. I don't know what else you would use this for. Now, of course, I'm going to clean it before I sell it. I'm thinking maybe, I don't know, like for bathroom towels. It's kind of big, though. You'd really need a big bathroom. I always like to try to think of the use. When something doesn't have like a set use, I think, okay, what would people want to use this for? Like, oh, I need that basket for this or for that, and I can't figure this one out. But for $5, I'll let the buyer figure it out. All right, this one's going in the cart. So the other day, if you watched my video, I found like a professional bingo, bingo set, and I, I took it so quick. I was like, oh yes, I didn't comp it or anything. And now today, look what I found, bingo. Is there a big, a big run on bingo games that people are, look at that, needing bingo games? So this one is $9.99. How much did I pay for the big one? I think I even paid less than that. I might've paid $9.99. I don't even know what these go for, but I am tempted to pick this one up too. I think $9.99 is a little bit high. But I don't know, I feel like really enamored with bingo sets lately. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this. Okay, new carts mm -hmm. came out, and this stemware was on the cart. I guess these are big wine glasses, $1.99 each. 
And against my better judgment, I'm like, oh, I'll take those. And then right behind them, when I lifted them up off the cart, I couldn't see behind them, was this set. I thought I was excited for this set. Let's put this set down. This is nice. I'm guessing this is, you know, contemporary, still pretty. Gonna be very careful not to break any of this, but look at the find of the day. Lifting this very gently. What? It's like an I dream of Jeannie decanter with the glasses. I did untape this and pulled this stopper out and it is in gorgeous condition. I cannot believe that this did not get broken in this store. I'll do this really gently. I am moving really slow. Okay, and what? $6.99. Yes. I don't even know what this is worth. And you guys know me. I am not about the glassware. And now I have a cart of glassware. What? Is this not the most stunning thing? And look at the little cordial glasses. So now I have a whole wicker basket of red glass. And I am super, super happy. The little cups are $1.99 each. I'm going to lift one of them up so you can see. This is what it looks like. $1.99. Look at that color. Oh, be still my heart. So beautiful. So beautiful. I am over the moon happy. Okay, we were having a semi-normal day. And then this happened. <laughs> Guys, there's no way for me to capture this on film when it happens here. All of a sudden, probably 10 to 12, 15 maybe carts of new inventory came out. So at first I was like, oh, an owl dish. $4 is a little high. And then as I started shopping the new carts, I realized the type of stuff coming out and I was just putting stuff in carts and grabbing new carts. So this is the present situation. I wanted to show you really how this happens. Like, unfortunately, I cannot film when it's happening, but this store just has a ton of inventory, so much inventory pour in that I have to take off my scarf and tie the two cards together and create like a wagon train. I, I can't even express like what is going on here. I'm pretty sure I'm taking all of this stuff. There are a few pieces I'm taking just by instinct, like this milk glass piece with the floral design. It's kind of like a, a lattice basket bowl thing. I have no idea, but look how pretty this is. And for $3, I can't look up every single thing. This is a piece I want to show you. All right, I will wind up showing you most of this, but there was no way, like I said, I could film with it coming out. Let me pull, see if I pull this cart back, it pulls the other one back. Look at this Native American piece of pottery. Now, I don't think it's especially old. There is a signature on it, thank goodness. That looks like a window or a Wimo 88. So 1988, it is vintage. And it's got this beaded emblem thing, $4.99. <laughs> so I wasn't gonna take time to turn on a camera. Ooh, there's a razor in there. Well, that's very dangerous. Why would there be a razor blade in there? I'm gonna be really careful taking that out. Um, yeah, so I can't say, oh, let me turn on my camera and let it focus. While these carts are coming out, I just have to start filling my cart. So, Native American piece of pottery I'm very excited for. This is what the bottom looks like. I don't know where this was sold, but for $5, absolutely yes. Here is a print. It is vintage. I love the way they paired this type of frame with this gorgeous print. I don't know that I've seen this. I've seen a lot of Jesus pictures and I don't think I've come across this exact um, edition or version. It does have a signature, but it is a print. And that is what the back looks like. And I'm paying $3. Always pictures of Jesus. I always pick them up. I don't even know where to begin. This is new in box. I think they're bourbon glasses. And at the end of this, I will try to give you a little haul because I know this is a crazy way of videoing a leather hat. <laughs> $9.99. And who makes this? This is HH. So HH, I think, is Herschel Hats. 
And this actually has a little bit of white from the vase on it. That'll brush off a little bit of the, um, of the plaster. Okay, I got a bag of Legos that are spilling out a lot of little figures in it. So I'm gonna take that. You see a picture frame I grabbed. The picture frame is $2.99. Nanette Lepore. Lepore, <laughs> I think she's Italian. Isn't this gorgeous? Now this is probably just sold in like home goods or something like that, but for $2.99, lovely a wedding picture would be gorgeous in this i realized to show you stuff in the store is going to be a little bit hard because i'm going to keep on shopping i'm going to try to either consolidate some of this or get another cart but i will try to do a trunk haul at the end of this portion of the video so i'm going to keep the carts here and go up and down the aisle without the carts so that we can see what's on the aisles and to push all three baskets would be too hard and, and I'd be in everybody's way. Oh, little Asian fan. Oriental, right? Oriental fans. These are vintage. They just seem inexpensive, but I remember these from when I was younger. I don't know what these bring. I don't think they bring a lot. There's another one in here. Oh, this one is a carved wood one. That's kind of cool. I could do a lot of them. What are they asking for them? $3. So it would cost me $6. What could I really get? I don't think I'd get much. Okay, so I'm not sure what we have here. This is thrown pottery that's initialed. Looks like DT or DE. And I really like these. Now you guys know me, I normally don't do canisters. Seven dollars, five dollars, so that's twelve and five seventeen. I think these are very good. I think they're just handmade canisters, and I really like these. All right, I'm grabbing all three. So I guess my question is, do people still collect tins? Is that still a thing? I have lost track of that niche. Guildcraft, container by Guildcraft, New York, USA. I like the tall wear painted on the black. $1.99, I'm going to grab this. Whoa, what is that big thing down there? <laughs> wow, I have never seen that before. I don't know that I want it. Why do people make this stuff? Oh, it's very heavy and very big. Look at the size of that. I guess you put like um, feathery grasses in it. Yeah, I'm not liking that. I think it was oversprayed too. So we're gonna stick that back, back on the rack. And I'm gonna grab my tin. Here's the street sign, Rehoboth. I don't know where Rehoboth is, I should. Rehoboth, Rehoboth Beach. Yeah, no idea. <laughs> I know I've heard it, I don't know where it is. Oh, another painted tray. Oh dear. Roger laughs at me because I always say, we're going to need a bigger booth. We're definitely going to need a bigger booth. In fact, I want a whole store. Not really. Okay, so I have covered my carts with cloth. Um, just some fabric material I found on one of the shelves. And I will fold it back up neatly when I'm done with it. But it's the only way to keep people out of the carts. And you know, I have to say, most people are really nice about it. They just don't realize that somebody is buying that much stuff. Look at this big lamp. Oh man, that's heavy. Wow. Look at that. I need to put it down somewhere. Where can I put this up? Oh, there's, a, oh, there's an aquarium there. I don't want that. I want to look at this. What style is this? Okay, so luckily, really nicely, they put the finial wrapped with the wire. That's great. Look at that. Is that 1940s or what? I got to study my plugs. <laughs> Okay, this is something. $9.99. Do I want this? Hmm. All right, I gotta control myself. I think I'm gonna have to put it back. I do love it. But you know what? Yeah, I'd either need two <laughs> or none at all. All right, I'm walking up and down the lamp aisle to find a second one before I put it back. Because if there's two, I'll take them. That's a new plug. See how these look old? You think it's like, you know, Victorian looking or something like that. That's a new plug. That's a trick. Let's see. Let's see if we can find a second one. I do like this lampshade. That's kind of cool. 
And on top of all of that, I hear another cart, I think, being pulled out. I think I'm going to have to put my fun lamp back, but that is stunning. Okay, so I'm hovering near my carts because they're becoming more and more full and people are still wanting to look. I mean, everybody is really nice. I never want to give the impression that people are stealing out of my carts. They're not. A lot of that doesn't go on here. I don't think I've ever had anything stolen out of my carts, maybe in the 12 years once, and it wasn't even in this area. But um, I'm staying near my carts. When I have this much good inventory, I mean, fantastic inventory, yeah, I don't stray far. All right, let's take a look down the figurine aisle. This is made in China. Caught my eye because it's like a little stoneware canister. I'm looking, looking. Mm. Oh, that's kind of pretty. That is vintage. Look at that vintage dirt in there. I don't see any chips or cracks. Okay, don't think this has a maker's mark. It probably, if at all, says made in Japan. Let's see if we can peel that back a little bit. It looks like somebody might have done it before me. Let's see what this says. Yeah, that's a made in Japan mark. We're gonna go ahead and take this. I like the colors on this. What else? I found some cups that might be Otagiri but um, they're not marked Odigiri, so I don't know much about Odigiri. Oh, uh, what is this? My word, it's like the thrift heaven opened up. Okay, interpretation. Oh, it's 1979 Oriental Bird Series. You know, that's not bad though, to have the look of something like that. Wow, that one's much heavier. Not very finely done. I think the really good, um, what do I want to say, Jasper wear or relief patterns, her shawl or wrap you'd be able to see through. A lot of it is very translucent, but pretty for copies. Whoops, a little sticker fell off. Let's see if we can get that back on there. All right, but we still have our vase. A pig piggy bank that unfortunately has a crack. He's kind of cute. All right, lots of figurines, lots of statues. This store is packed today. There are so many shoppers here that there are no carts. And this place usually has a good 50 or 60, probably more carts. We saw that the other day. We saw that already. <laughs> Okay, what are these? Huh, it's very interesting. I don't know what those are. All right, let's turn around and come back up this side. These are more like vases and planters, <laughs> butter dishes, <laughs> everything mixed in all together. I have to tell you what, that lamp is still staying in my head. Now, I don't think the average household wants a lamp like that, but when you find a high quality piece, yeah, you just, you just want it. Okay, we're gonna put our vase down there once again. Look at this. This seems to be cut glass, I'm gonna say. All right, my glass people. Does anybody recognize this one? That is lovely. $4.99. Yeah, this is all very sharp. I can see why this is called cut glass. You know what's strange about it though? They missed cutting one of the edges. This one's smooth. It's the only one. <gasps> is it a flaw? Is it a one of a kind? I'm now rich. I think this is called brilliant glass, isn't it? Do I want brilliant glass? Hmm. I'm not sure. I think I'm gonna leave it for somebody else. I think I have enough going on. All right, grabbing our little Japan vase, and that's it. This little figurine was probably sitting here when I filmed this show, but coming back up, $2.99, I just noticed it. It's a little cat staring at a mouse playing a guitar. Oh my word, it doesn't get any cuter than that. Am I getting old or what? That is adorable. But unfortunately, I don't think there's much profit in that. I don't see any marking of who made it. It could be, you know, look how good we'll put that tag on there. It's just crazy. That probably took a while to get that perfectly centered in that space. 
But, um, yeah, I figured I'd show it to you guys because that is the cutest thing. All right, guys, I think that's it for filming in the store. I am going to try to do a little bit of a trunk haul for you guys when we get out into the car. So stay tuned for that. Oh, I thought a new cart was coming out. Okay, so I've been leaving the store for the past half hour. I've announced it four times and I'm still here. Look at this owl figurine. I don't think he's wood, but he's kind of cool. I'm going to pick him up. And I do love these mirrors that have two hooks. Why would they have two? wonder if put together that makes something. For $3, I'm going to grab these. I think these are vintage. The glass is very heavy in them, and they're kind of cool. I don't know what somebody would do with them. Okay, that's kind of cool. A pink cup with an artist palette saucer. I want to see who's making that. Nobody. Goodwill's making it. Who is this? This looks like um, Taylor and Smith. I'm not sure. All right, still grabbing my mirrors. Let's go put these in the cart. Oh, I'm stuck. There we go. And take the owl. All right, let's look really quickly. Oh, we have some red iron trivets. I think I have some of those in the booth right now. I think if they haven't sold. So I'm going to wait on those. Are those temptations? Okay, where can I put my stuff down? That's the only problem with not wheeling carts around. That you have to hold everything. All right, that's just made in China. Huh, is that Falls Graph? I don't know who that is. All right. Wow, wow, what a day it has been. What a day. So good. The picking is good here in Pennsylvania. All right, guys, for real, I'm going to the checkout and I will do a trunk haul. As you can tell, we are back home in the dining room. I was going to set up a haul in my trunk, but as you could tell, this would have been quite the challenge to unwrap everything from newspaper. I did wrap it this time to keep it safe and do it in my um, in the parking lot. So we are back home. I am in the dining room. Just gonna briefly show you what we got today because I'm not gonna do a regular haul on this stuff, but today was a really, really good day. I couldn't have been happier. Now, like I showed in the video, once my cart started filling from the new inventory coming out, I could not show you everything individually. And I was pushing and pulling three, at one time, four carts. So I took off my neck scarf and tied carts together. Yep, that is how tenacious I am. It's so funny. Recently, my daughter Melissa sent me a little um, card that I have on my desk. It says, you are crushing it. <laughs> I was thrilled to find all of this stuff today. I couldn't believe my luck. Sometimes the thrift store is just ho-hum and a lot of broken stuff. And other times it's like, who is donating this stuff? Tell them to send everything. All right, we're going to go through it quickly. I'm going to focus on the things that I didn't get to show you in the store and give you any kind of comments I have about it. But I'm not going to be able to tell you what they're going to sell for because I haven't even run comps on most of this stuff. When the thrift store has a lot and there are 20 to 30 other people in the hard goods section, there's no relaxedness about this. This is fast and furious. So let's get started. I'm going to start on the left and work my way around and show you what we got. These are Baldwin, uh, the premium towel bars. They're in the gold finish. They are brass. I love Baldwin. A lot of times I find the candlesticks. I paid $10 per piece, but um, Baldwin is a great name. So I was really happy to find these. Next up is a softball mitt, and I know nothing about this. I have to comp every one. I didn't have time to comp it. I went by quality, just the way it looked. I paid $7 for it. This is um, what this looks like. I think I'll do fine with this, so I'm not worried about the $7. Uh, super flex palm, you know, all the things that I know nothing about, so there's that. Dooney and Burke, what? <laughs> a vintage Dooney and Burke, very nice condition. Um, let's take a look at the price first. $7, just lovely. I'm probably going to sell this one in the booth again. That's where I have the coach bag, but I might, I might sell this one on eBay. I haven't made any decisions yet, but I really like this style. All right, here is a print. You can see my ring light. I'm using my ring light as regular lighting for all of this because that's what was in the room. Beautiful print. 
I love this gorgeous landscape. My best artwork that sells my highest amount are, are always landscapes. So when there's a gorgeous landscape, I always pick it up. I do especially like the frame and it says $2.99. So I paid $3 for it. It's quite heavy. The glass is heavy. This is what the back looks like. And very nice wire. You could see it's, you know, a professional framer. When you start to see little felt circles to protect it from the wall, you know, so it doesn't sit right against the wall and, you know, wire that's been done nicely, you always want to take a second look at stuff um, that has that kind of framing. All right, we're going to start here and move to the right. A little vintage wood poker box. It has pinochle and poker playing cards in it. I got it for the box. I love this brass plate on the top, and I paid $4. Here is another Baldwin piece. This is forged in America, came in this box. Candlestick number 7200, American Museum Collection. So this might be a reproduction of a famous candlestick. I don't know. I did show you the two baskets. I got some beer taps. I don't think these are especially old. Few little dings, but I didn't pay much for them, between two and four dollars, so I picked up the six of them. Here is a doorstop. At first I thought, oh, it's a reproduction, but I'll take it anyway. And now I'm thinking this might be an old one. I'm gonna have to look this up. Let me see if I see any marking on it. I don't. No name that I can tell. Very heavy, of course, because it's cast iron. A basket of flowers. This will do well. And what did I pay for it? $3. Okay, let me very gently put this back. Okay, a little clock that is an owl. And this is definitely vintage. I don't know the name. I'd have to peel the um, sticker off, the price sticker, to see if there is a company name under there. But when it's owls, Almost always, yes. I'm going to tuck him back in there carefully. I did get the two glass lamps. These are beautiful. These are going into the vintage booth. Um, the shades. The shades are not in bad condition. They do have a little bit of dust on them. I will clean these shades with a magic eraser. A magic eraser works wonders on a lampshade. I don't press hard because magic erasers can be quite abrasive. So I really just give them a good wipe down. If there are any stains, which these don't have any notable stains, I will use um, one of the wipes, the hand wipes I've talked about. They're regular disinfectant wipes that I get at the dollar store and I'll just um, briefly brush over where the dirt is but these are in good shape except for a good amount of dust all right here is the star of the show I think I did catch this how gorgeous is this it's like an I dream of genie glass decanter in the most glorious red you have ever seen I've never seen this red Maybe it's common and I just haven't seen it. Oh, I see my husband coming in with all kinds of inventory. <laughs> he was thrifting today someplace else. Look at that color. Is that not gorgeous? All right. I picked up a leather hat. Just beautiful. And it has a braid trim. I might have caught that in the video, finding that. I did grab a bag of Legos only because there were a lot of figures in there. And when there are the little figures, I separate those out. I sell those separately. And then I just sell the mixed Legos, probably by weight. Okay, I don't know what I'm doing with these, but I wanted them. So very fun. I found this print, the princess of quite a lot. <laughs> So I thought that was very apropos for today's haul, and I loved it, $2.99. I think this was sold in Bloomingdale's. I think it has a Bloomingdale's uh, sticker on the back. Here are the canisters. I did show you finding these, and this is thrown pottery. So I don't think this is like Falls Graph or a brand name. I think somebody made these. Just beautiful. Gorgeous condition, too. Okay, I found two ceramic cats uh, they both have dates underneath them, I think 1967, and I don't know if the other one has the same date. I'm not going to try to pick them up because I have things leaning against them, but just know they're two vintage cats, one with green eyes, and he's white, and this golden 
cat, this Persian cat, he has brown eyes. All right, I did show you the Native American vase. I think this is just for the souvenir trade, but I thought it was very good. And this is like a leather coating on this, not a coating, covering. That's what I want to say, a leather covering. So I thought that was beautiful. This one does have few tiny chips, and I knew that, but I decided to pick it up anyway. I don't think that's going to hurt the value too much. An owl spoon rest or trinket dish, coin dish, a contemporary. I did show this. I showed you the tin. A large lot of mugs came out, most of them with Starbucks. I tried to grab as many as I could. So these are the You Are Here series I always talk about. San Diego, Boston, and New York. And then I found Brussels. I don't know what this um, series is called. I think they're just other countries. And Barcelona. I found Odagiri cups. This cat one, I think I've had these before. I love these. And it says Odagiri on the bottom. And a few other. These looked very familiar to me, and I did not see the markings. So I'm going to Google image these. Unfortunately, I only found two. But I do well with mugs like this. So I went ahead and grabbed them. Another shopper had grabbed this piece of pottery, and she said to her husband, Oh, look at this pretty pottery. And I felt like my head turned like an owl. Like pottery? Did somebody say pottery? And I didn't even say anything to her. And she said to him, yeah, I'm not really into pottery. And she just looked over at me. I guess she saw my head turn. And she said, oh, it's signed on the bottom. Would you like this? Would I like it? You're my new best friend. Look how pretty that is. $1.99. Glazed gorgeous. A little Pyrex bowl. Nothing of note. Just a little yellow one. But it's in good condition. I don't see any dishwasher uh, damage or scratching. All right, so that finishes that. I think I've hit pretty much on everything on the table. This is the Golden Snitch um, from Harry Potter. When I opened it up, it's just an empty bowl. So I'm going to guess you keep candy in it. I have no idea. I don't even know where this was sold. Universal Studios? I don't know. I have no idea going to balance it in the Barcelona cup. A wooden box. Surprise, surprise. I love a good wooden box. Technique. What is technique? I don't even know. But this is one of the magnetic ones with the divided dish. Beautifully made. Here is a bowl I know nothing about. This is a very heavy stoneware, blue stripe. And the reason I picked it up is because it's stamped USA. How can you not buy a stoneware bowl made in USA? with vintage dirt in it. <laughs> All right, so that is the table. You saw the two rugs. I'm gonna to try to include screenshots of this company's um, comparisons, you know, what their rugs sell for. And another prize of the day, this Wagner Antique Griddle Flat Pan. I don't know what to call it, pancake pan, eggs, something. A griddle, right? That's that's probably the proper term for it. Six ninety nine, and the Wagner name is on the bottom. Very rusty. I don't even care. It looks great. Will I clean up the rust? Probably not, because I don't have time to de-rust things. I'm gonna sell it as is, and that one's probably gonna go in the booth. I'll have to see what the price is on eBay compared to what the booth price would be. All right, I think that is everything. You guys have been asking, those of you new to my channel, when I talk about cleaning with a yellow sponge, what that means. See this piece of foam? This is seat cushion foam. People buy these to create seat cushions. And when I see a new one in Goodwill that's still in its wrapper, I will go ahead and buy that. Like say it's a fairly big piece of seat cushion. And then I cut these. These clean everything. They clean suede. I use this for handbags. I use this dipped in the Martin's Balsam for cleaning leather. I use this for decobwebbing things. I use these for everything. So out of one seat cushion, I probably get, I'm going to say 50 of these little squares that I just cut. And once they get really dirty, I just throw them away and um, they're very biodegradable. So that is a good thing. All right. I think I hit on everything. Did I? I hope so. I wanted to give you a quick haul because this stuff is just going to start coming into the booth and coming into eBay. And it was just an amazing day. 
again, met a lot of friends, new friends and old friends, and uh, we just all had a great time. Everybody else's carts were as full as mine. Okay, maybe not everybody was pushing and pulling three carts, but people's carts were overflowing. So it was an amazing day. Well, hey everyone, welcome into the channel. It is Sunday evening and I am about to pull shipping. I figured I would turn the camera on and film a little bit for you guys. Now, while this is not my favorite thing to do, filming while I'm pulling shipping and then having to ship all of this craziness out, I do know that you guys love to see what is selling and it's just a good opportunity to see what inventory is looking like, what is going on here at Lavender Clothesline. So like I said, this is Sunday evening. I have had an especially crazy busy week. I did the booth, I filmed extra, sold a ton and just keeping all the balls in the air. But tonight we're going to just settle in. We're going to relax. I'm going to share with you what my thoughts are on the items. I don't know if I'm going to pull everything with you watching because I don't know, there's a lot. Most of it is hard goods. It seems on eBay that when I list hard goods, hard goods sell. Now I'm not talking about the hard goods that I just listed. I'm just saying in general. And when I list clothing, it seems like eBay says, oh, she's listing clothing. Let's sell her clothing. So whatever sales I make, I'm always grateful. And like I said, this week has been especially good for YouTube and eBay and Facebook Marketplace and for you guys subscribing. Thank you so much for growing my channel quickly. I love you guys and appreciate you so much. And that's why I'm going to do a pull shipping with me because I know you like it. Hit the like and subscribe button. Let's get going. Let's see what's sold in my eBay store, Lavender Clothesline. So most of my hard goods are still in this area. This might look a little bit different to you. It's just because furniture has been coming in and going out. So I did go to an auction Monday night, won quite a few things, and they have been listed and coming downstairs. So I just pushed the table to the side just to get a little more free flowing space. First item that sold $38 for two vintage uh, square gold mirrors. I picked these up somewhere. I'm going to say Goodwill. They are going to be over here. Oh, I think I see them up here. Let's pull these down gently. So we can tell from the back that these are vintage. We're going to bring them a little bit more in the light. Sorry I didn't set up extra lighting. I'm just amazed that I have glasses and I have a drink. This is my drink of choice, seltzer coconut flavored seltzer water. <laughs> I'm so fancy, aren't I? Sometimes when I just get tired of drinking regular water, I'll grab out like a non-sweetened seltzer. All right, so these are the two gold mirrors. I listed them together as a lot. There is one. Here is the other. Let's take a look at the back, see what information was there, the size of it, and made in Mexico. This one is vintage. I'm not exactly sure about this one. I did list them vintage. I'm almost positive that this one is vintage. So two of them for $33. I'm thinking I paid either $6 for the two or eight. I think I bought these during the 50% off sale. So that would be the highest I paid. I think I even paid lower. Next up was a vintage oval rattan bamboo tray. And that also sold for $38. This is where I keep my trays and platters. I remember finding this in Goodwill and I was like, oh yes, I love this. And I compared it to the wicker trays and bamboo trays that um, everybody sells that I've sold a lot of, but this one is quite different. I don't think I have the other ones to show you what I'm talking about because I sell out of those very quickly. But $38 and just know my items, most items under $5 I'm paying. And I'm going to keep this moving at a clip. The next is the Maitland Smith a uh, piece of pottery. I'm pretty sure it's a fragrance oil diffuser. That sold for $35. And I see that sitting right next to these little glass floral trees I just won at the auction. Look how pretty everything is. Everything's so sparkly and beautiful. <laughs> do I love my own items? I do. Maitland Smith is a great brand, very high end, and I love finding it. So that is a definite yes. And like I said, that one sold for $35. Next up was one buyer who bought four things. Thank you so much. I won't name names on film because I don't have anybody's permission to say their name. Some people are very private. So this buyer paid $106 plus shipping uh, for things. Two cats and a mug we're going to get first. 
So the cats are over here. <laughs> Lots of cats in the house. So this cat is part of the order, the black one with the green eyes. And we're going to put that over here. So you can see that when I pull shipping and I'm filming, it goes a little bit slower than when I'm doing it without a camera in my hands. A lot of times I'm looking at the item and looking at the screen to make sure everything is running correctly on the camera. So it does take me a little bit longer. Okay, and the third piece is that mug that I said, what is this? Is this a tadpole mug? And I believe the signature was Morgan. And it turns out that Miss Morgan is quite the potter and her stuff is in demand. I just went by how um, unique a design it was, but how well done it was. You know me, all about the quality. And again, I apologize for the lighting. I didn't have time to set up a, a special light. So we're just going to have to brighten the film as we go along. And um, you know what? I want to tell you individual prices. Let me go into this. Okay, I did want to separate it out so I can tell you what the item sold for instead of just a group pricing. So this first cat was Smithson, E. Smithson. It's a name that has a copyright attached to it, $22. The Black Kitty sold for $22 with the green eyes. The Mug sold for $48. And it is stunning, I have to say. It is beautifully made. And the last piece is a Leah Sophia Tiger's Eye Necklace. And this one's $14. As a matter of fact... The other day, I think I pulled this. I think this sold on Friday, and I was looking for something else, and I said, oh, this is the necklace that sold, that I'll be shipping out Sunday night. So there is that necklace. All right, so that order, I should keep this together, is one order, and like I said, $106 plus shipping. We are in the men's clothing section. If you're new to my channel, I keep all of my clothing items separated by types of items. I don't give them inventory numbers, and I know that sounds crazy, but it works for me. So the next item is this Jack Nicholas Golf, um, I'm going to call it a pullover. I think this is a quarter zip. And I believe this is called Golden Bear. That is Jack Nicholas um, logo. So we're going to bring that over to the table. And this sold for $22. Next up, oh, is the Little Bird Guide um, book. And this was from $19.51, $12. So this is going to be in a bin called Small Books. I keep my large books and my small books separated. So see how this says I have two of them, small books and small books. I can just tilt it and see which <laughs> it's in this one I can tell. Thank goodness for clear bins. I caught on to that late to the party. Sometimes it takes me a while to catch on to things, but I get there. <laughs> I think the first couple of years I had all solid bins. And then one day it was like, oh, clear bins. You can see what's in there. So this is a bird guide. Land Birds East of the Rockies, and um, just so sweet. So very happy that this one sold very quickly. Glad to see somebody getting that. Like I said, $12. Next up is a Vintage Cranberry uh, Ruffle Vase. And again, I just found this one. I'm going to say I found this one in Goodwill. Let's gently pull this up. Try to be really careful with all of the glass. As you can see, it's like a swirl design with a ruffle top. Beautiful. There's the pontal mark. Not especially smooth. So when the pontal mark is more pronounced, I believe that is just a sign that it's not like Fenton or a real established you know, better company. That's just a guess. I don't know that for sure. But in any case, that thing is stunningly beautiful. $16. We have a hand carved wood dipper spoon bowl. <laughs> all the words, all the time. $15. And the wood section is growing. I know. Shocker, right? I love wood. I just love wood. Here it is here. Okay, I think this is fairly new too. I think when I show items in a haul or I show finding them in Goodwill, they do have a tendency to sell a little bit quicker because my channel has over 80,000 people, you know, so out of the 80,000 people, <laughs> your items are going to sell a little quicker if you post, you know, in a video like, hey, I'm finding this in Goodwill. So that is the story there. Next up, we have a vintage Dan River 
uh, rod pocket drapery. It's called the Babylon print, and that was $19.99. Let's go find that. Okay, so back over here are quite a few different tubs of different linens and things like that. Lots of Pottery Barn still, love Pottery Barn, but this big tote has a lot of my non-Pottery Barn uh, drapes, curtains, valances, things like that. I think it's here. Yes, John Wilman Rod Pocket Drapery by Dan River. Again, I probably found this in Goodwill. It's brand new in package. Most likely this is vintage, I'm thinking. And the um, style name is Babylon. And what did I get for this? $19.99. Okay. Next up, oh, a needlepoint, a Christmas Santa um, stocking. What? <laughs> Aren't we in February? $16. I'm going to go into it because I have quite a few stockings and we're going to take a look at which one it is because I don't think I gave these an inventory letter. I could have. Okay, so Santa has a sled on his right side. This is actually how I do it. In my head, it all happens very quickly when I'm not filming. Red back. Let's go find that Christmas stocking. And that is in this back corner. I will close all of this up at the end. All right, so we have Christmas here, but the majority of this is ornaments, things like that, kind of hard decorations. This Christmas bin is most likely where the stocking is going to be, and we're going to pull that one. All right, so obviously this is a mixed bin. I do have ornaments in this bin. I didn't even realize it. And this is the stocking right here. Red velvet. Is it velvet? It's kind of like flannel. Red flannel back, and Santa has the sled on his right side. I guess that would be his left, my right. <laughs> Is that correct, Santa? And a uh, needlepoint. Vintage, absolutely. And this one sold for $16. Nothing thrills me more that Christmas is still selling. It makes me feel like I don't have to take items down. Now, in the vintage booth that Roger and I have in Old Factory Antiques, we have pulled most of the Christmas out of the booth, and we have started with the more spring, Valentine's, Easter stuff. Because in a booth, I think aesthetically, when you're looking at a space all at once, it does matter. But in an eBay store... To me, anything goes. So whether I have Halloween in January or Christmas in July, it's all good. There's always buyers that are looking to shop off season and I am happy to provide stuff. Plus, I don't know that a lot of sellers are carrying Christmas stockings. So if somebody, a prospective buyer is coming onto eBay and they, for some reason, want to buy a Christmas stocking in February, mine might have less competition. Just a thought. Just to keep that in mind, $16. Um, and I think I paid 2 or $3 for them. Next up are the mid-century modern, the Lucite gold fleck taper candlesticks uh, with the holders, $28. This is the present that my husband brought home for me <laughs> that you guys felt so bad about. But Roger and I have the type of relationship that we are resellers through and through. So when we go to a thrift store and the other one is not, you know, along for the shopping experience, we bring home presents, quote unquote, for each other. They're not presents to keep. It's not like, oh, my husband gave me these lovely gold fleck lucite candlesticks because he loves me, which he does, and, and he's wonderful to shop for me. But it's because he knows that I'll be thrilled to receive these to sell. And I do the same thing with him. Neither one of us has hurt feelings over it. The candlesticks sold for $28. All right, next up. Oh, one of the Chinese glass stone and jade bonsai trees sold. We were just looking at those. Let me get the right one. $36. This was part of last Monday night's auction at Bolt's Auction. And I did make that video. Once in a while, I will throw in auction footage. But you guys are purists through and through. All you want is thrifting videos. And once in a while, guys, I'm going to do some other stuff. I'm going to do pull shipping. I'm going to do let's go to the flea market. Let's go yard selling. <laughs> but 99% of you just want to shop in Goodwill. Anyway, here is the little tree. This is beautiful. Can I just say how much I appreciate these little trees? Little bonsai. And this is all jade and glass. So beautiful. $36. Next up is a Nike Dry Fit Score. It is purple. And it is a size medium. 
So turning around, it's either going to be on this rack or it's going to be folded. And once again, I just haven't had time to fold, but it's okay. I keep everything covered and it will all wait for me for the day that I wind up having a lot of time. Nothing thrills me more than to have a day of folding. I bring everything upstairs. I set up a whole folding thing. Okay, it's going to be in the bin. A whole folding thing in my living room. I mean, ironing boards, tags, bags, tissue paper. And I just play movie after movie and fold and pack items. It's like a Zen thing. Can I just say how wonderful it is? But unfortunately, I don't get to do it often enough. Skorts, shorts, and skirts. Let's pull this bin down. Okay, let's take a look at this. A skirt, a jean skirt, huh? Because the minute I saw this, I was like, this doesn't belong in here. This is a jean skirt. It would be in regular skirt. But this says skirt. I did not even know I was selling denim skirt. Interesting. Okay, Nike medium women's skirt. Let's bring this over to the table. And what did I say this sold for? $24. I probably paid, I'm going to guess, $4.99 or $2.50, depending on whether I got this in a half-price sale. Okay, next up, a wood letter holder. This is a caddy that holds your letters and bills. It's an organizer, $35. It's going to be on the wood section. I would love to have just wood, like a whole eBay store of just wood items. That would make me very happy. I'm all about the wood. Wood meaning wicker, bamboo, Anything made, you know, with a wood of sort. Okay, let's see if I can see this. Mm, I'm probably going to have to put the camera down and really dig into this a little bit. Unless it's on here. Nope, I don't see it there either. Okay, I'm going to have to put the camera down and find it by digging. All right, so here is the wood caddy organizer. That is what it looks like. And like I said, it sold for $35. While I was over there, I realized that the toll box, this wooden box that I just picked up, sold. Let's take a look at what that brought. Um, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. That brought $29.99. And since I was looking in the wood section and I saw it, I said, oh, I think that's sold. All right, let's go back to our place and keep going in order. The next uh, Vintage Royal... Worcester. Am I saying that right, guys? Worcester. I was trying Worcester, Worcester. <laughs> it's kind of like Worcester sauce. <laughs> I don't even know what to call that. Worcester. I, I hope I'm saying that right now. Bone China set it too. It is a set of small trinket dishes, I call them. They are in a box. And I believe those are going to be in this corner over here. I don't know why I know that, but I think it's these right here. Let's move the pumpkins. Where can I put pumpkins? We'll place the pumpkins on the animal shelf. Oh, I think this guy's sold. I'm going to have to grab him. Okay. Royal Worcester. That can't be right. Bone China. <laughs> I've had these for a while. And what did they sell for? See, but it didn't bother me that they were sitting there. $16. The only way that you can run a long tail business, in my opinion, is if you don't need your capital back out right away. I can invest a thousand, two thousand, ten thousand dollars, not to be crude about it, and not need my money back right away because I've built up my capital for doing this. Now, I didn't have that kind of money to invest in the very beginning. When I went shopping, you know, I could wait a couple of months, but I couldn't wait long tail. Now I'm fully invested in this as a business. I hope so after 12 years. And I can wait to get my money knowing that these will bring a good profit because I trust my judgment of what I'm picking up. So here are the two little dishes. Like I said, I've probably had these, I don't know, over a year, maybe close to two years. And I probably paid a couple of dollars and they sold for $16. So that is my little commercial. That is my little vote for long tail selling. Next item is the gold cat. And he is gold leaf, $60 he brought, and he is just beautiful. The expression in his eyes, he's got tiger's eyes. I talked about him in the vintage hall. Look at that face. I've never seen a cat like that. He's got little felted pads on his paws. 
<laughs> I do realize he's not a real a real cat, but sometimes, you know what? They're just so cute. All right. I could see how people become enamored <laughs> with um, inanimate objects. Okay, next up, two heavy Baldwin brass candlesticks. I have some upstairs, some downstairs. I'd have to see how tall these are. Let's go into them to see what they look like to make sure I'm shipping out the correct pair. Okay, so they look like that. Did I bring these down or are these still upstairs? Hmm, I don't see them here. Unless I'm looking right at them. I've got some lighting I just pulled out of my bathroom that just got listed. This is the original lighting from the house. Very cool. And I did enjoy it for a while, but um, I put up new lighting and I'm selling that. Oh, it might be these candlesticks. I think it might be them. Now, these are missing their felted bottoms, so I did call that a flaw. Easy enough to cut some heavy cardboard or any kind of stiff material and cover it with felt would be really nice. Here they are here. I'm gonna check on the measurement. I think I have even bigger ones upstairs that I won at the auction. I love a good candlestick, very heavyweight. Yep, that's them. And they sold for $24. All right, so we have a hand-carved wood zebra and we have the genuine leather messenger bag that was made in Florence, together $67. Let's look for a wood zebra. Okay, we have antelope, kuzus going on here, African kuzu. Mm, here he is here. Let's, let's move this guy. This is my favorite. I've talked about him before. He is just beautiful. I think he's a weasel. And we're going to place him up there so we can reach in without breaking anything and get our zebra. Zebra. Why do people say zebra? It is zebra, right? Okay, I'm going to go into this to tell you what these sold for separately so you get an idea. The zebra sold for $12 and the genuine leather messenger bag, $55. Now, I think that messenger bag, I'm going to guess it's in handbags. Let's go look in handbags together. So my handbags, unfortunately, right now, are behind this. Not really, unfortunately. It's all on wheels. You know the routine. I mean, how hard is that? Not very hard. <laughs> I just want everything to be super easy in life. Today I was coming out of Target. I had run in to get a Starbucks coffee. Rajan um, had invited me on a date and we went to um, an art museum, which was a really nice way to spend a Sunday. And I was in the rush mode because I know I wanted to film tonight and pull shipping and I was starting to gear up. And I went to take my bandolier with my phone off from around my neck and I hit myself in the mouth with my phone. Can I tell you how quickly my lip just blew up? I'm like, oh my goodness, how am I going to talk? But it came down very quickly. All right, these are belts. I don't know why I told you all of that, but I did because I tell you guys almost everything. All right, let's pull this out. This is the brown handbag. Oh, and I'm getting low on brown handbags. I haven't seen it this low in a long time. Here it is here. It is a leather, it's almost like a briefcase, but not quite. I call this a messenger bag. The leather is beautiful on this. I have to find another word to describe things besides beautiful. I do say beautiful a lot. Look at that. It's like a little portable desk. Very nice, $55. We are searching next for the Williams-Sonoma yellow mixing bowls. We're not really searching because I know where they are. $36. And the Murano glass twisted spiral swirl art glass, $60. So the nesting bowls, I believe, are over here. They're underneath. Now, normally I keep pots and pans down here. And as you can see, I do not have any pots and pans in the house. I don't think, did I sell them all? There's one, one or two there. That is amazing. I've been selling a lot of cookware. Okay, we're going to put these. These are Williams Sonoma, like a yellow color with the grip bottom. And I knew they were Williams Sonoma because it says it on the bottom. Love that. And the art glass, which is over here. Again, I posted this one on Instagram to show you how beautiful this is. This has a crystal base, very heavy, gorgeously clear glass, just stunning, $60 that's sold for. 
Okay, is that everything? Nope, there's more. Hand carved. This is the genuine horn cup, $34. All right, Karen, where would you have put a horn cup? Oh, I see it. <laughs> I don't really have a horn cup section, but for some reason I felt like it should go back there. This is all carved. Beautiful. Wood base. And I learned something new when I was researching this. And I asked you guys, can horn be bent like that? And I believe you guys said it's actually melted. It is, it's actually warmed and curved over. I did not know that horn could bend like that. So I thought that was very cool. All right, what did I say I got for that? $34. And the next thing is a Target rain jacket. This is going to be a challenge to find if it's folded because it's a unisex. And I don't know if I would have put it in men's or women's. $33. First, we're going to look on the jacket rack. So that is this here. But I think this is folded. I don't think this is on a hanger. Um, I don't see it. Let's look in men's outdoor jackets. It's not on this rack. Hope I'm not making you dizzy. Okay, so over to the men's section. And men's jackets are men's outdoor jackets and vests. Let's pull this one. Okay, so these are the outdoor jackets, or what I would consider an outdoor jacket or vest. But this looks like it here. Yes, it is. Target sold Hunters, so it was a collaboration with Hunter, you know, like Hunter Boots, small men's jacket, and like I said, it's a silver color. And what did this sell for? I've had this one for, I'm going to say six months, maybe, and I believe I found this in a thrift store. I did not find this in Target. I don't do a lot of retail arbitrage from Target. I do Pottery Barn. Mm, I do the outlets a lot, uh, mall stores, if they're running a big clearance, but I really don't do Target their clearance racks. I have tried in the past, and it's just ho-hum. I never really find big amounts of stuff to make it worth the buy-in at a very good price. So um, this one sold for $33. I will take that all day long. Happy Easter, a distressed wood sign, $16. That is going to be in wood. And it's going to be in sign. So I'm going to gently take these things off and go through. It's probably going to be this one, I'm guessing. Here is the Happy Easter Bunny sign. These are new. I picked up probably about 40 or 50 of those. I think I have three left and $16. I think I got these for $1.99. All right, next up is a beautiful, a heavy art glass vase. And here it is here. I think this is one of my all-time favorite vases that I've found. One of them. <laughs> I've found a lot of vases in my day. Look how beautiful this is. The colors. It's all cased with red. It looks like it might have been cased with white and then red. This thing is just a chunk of glass, beautifully made. And what did this bring? Let me carefully set it down and give you the price on it. $79.99. All right, so the table is looking good. I have to ship all of this out tonight. Why don't I just sell clothing? I don't know. <laughs> all right, and we did get the primitive box, $29.99. Next up is a room fragrance diffuser. Um, it's porcelain with a coral top, $24.99. And the bottom is glass. Here it is here. Let's bring this over. We're going to set it down right here. And I imagine, again, I paid a couple of dollars for it. I believe that the stopper is porous. It's like a clay, maybe, and it draws the oil, the scented oil up, and then it's diffused out through the coral-like top. So that is quite, quite cool. All right, next up. Oh, the Pioneer Woman salt and pepper shaker sold. Those are over here. Let's just move our rack a little bit. Here they are here. Almost all salt and pepper shakers I find have salt and pepper in them. So if you're new to reselling and you're going to pick up salt and pepper shakers, you always want to take out the bottom stopper to make sure there's no salt or pepper left in it. 
Um, all right, so those sold for $8. Oh, the pig sold. <laughs> do we love a good pig? Yes, we do. $31. Oh, he's over here. It's not you. Sorry, little piggy, you're next. Let's put him here. It is this pig. $31. Look at that face. It reminds me of Wilbur. Is it Wilbur in Charlotte's Web? Not that I knew him personally. <laughs> it gets scary when you talk about... It gets scary when you talk about animals like, you know, like you knew them personally. Look how beautiful he is. Just stunning. $31. He's going out the door. I'm going to have to pack him really well. I've lost my phone. All right. Next up. Oh, plates. Okay. Franciscan Masterpiece Gold Band China. Four of them sold for $18. And I think that's the last one we have to pull. I would imagine these are going to have an inventory number. Let's take a look. Okay, so it's a gold banded luncheon plate. There they are there. See full description. Inventory number one. When I have multiples, the same type of china or something like that, I will give those inventory numbers because I always want to make sure that the plates that I'm photographing are the exact plates that my buyer's going to get. So in those cases, I do put inventory numbers. Now it's finding it. I think it's on this rack. Yeah, it looks like it might be back there. Or no, I think that might be them. All right, I'm going to pull these plates. Here is inventory number one, a set of four luncheon plates. Beautiful, just like an ivory color with a simple gold double banding around it. And this is the Mark Franciscan Masterpiece China, gold banded. Okay, so you can see that I got the table cleared off. All of the inventory is upstairs. And I was just about to sit down and um, start to figure out shipping what items went with what. And I said, oh, let me bring down the basket of the items that I just listed to get them downstairs. I heard my phone cha-ching and the Uncle Sam blow mold sold. So that is a wonderful sale. I'm thrilled to be shipping out. We're going to pull him into the light. Now he is missing his flag, but I don't think that would be a hard thing to find and they do have their lights so I'm going to have to get them this guy has his original flag we're going to pull him out I am so happy that I found these not only because it's a great sale $199.99 but just to save these items these are iconic and I have never found the Uncle Sam blow molds before I have found all kinds of blow molds I've found the nativity and pumpkins and ghosts but never Uncle Sam so pretty thrilled with that all right, I have to remember where I put the lights for them. I'm sure they're around here somewhere. In between doing all the tasks that I have to do, the shipping, the shopping, the pulling, the filming, the editing, all the things, I try to break up all of my tasks with other things. So I group my tasks together. Like I'll do photos for eBay and photo like four or 500 photos I'll take. And then I'll stop and do something totally not reseller related. So today is Sunday and in between filming and shipping <laughs> and listing, I put together one of my favorite winter stews. This is a chicken and sweet potato korma. I just simply use these sauces. This this is Patakas, the original, and these come in different flavors. This one is a creamy coconut with spices, but it's mild. Sometimes I throw chickpeas into this, sometimes a little bit of onion. This time I kept it very simple. It is just a chicken with the sauce and sweet potato, fresh sweet potatoes that I just simply peeled. So you can see what this looks like. Chunks of chicken, super tender. And this is so easy to make, but yet it makes me feel like my whole life is not work. Sometimes I make a brown rice to make it a little bit healthier and this is carb heavy but in the winter it's okay. Today I took two walks so we're all good and sometimes when I feel indulgent I make white rice and that's what I did tonight. I think I made a basmati rice and that is already uh, cooling in the fridge because I made it earlier. I just wanted to encourage those of you who feel like reselling is a lot of work, a lot of different tasks. It is but 
I find when I break it up with things that have nothing to do with reselling, it just makes the whole day go a lot easier. So I will sit down at my desk and say, okay, list 15 things and then go do whatever. Sometimes it's as enjoyable as watching a YouTube video that somebody else created. Um, truth be told, yesterday I washed my car, which I enjoyed because, you know, with this weather being in the high 40s, it felt like it was spring out. So I did that in between working. Sometimes it's enjoyable, relaxing things. Sometimes it's just having a really nice meal or a cup of tea and some cookies. Sometimes it's making a chicken and sweet potato stew. That's one of my favorites. And sometimes it's just watching a little bit of TV or a movie. So I want to encourage you, if you are inundated with a lot of tasks, you're overwhelmed, break up your tasks with doing something else. That way you don't feel like you're just working 24-7, which basically I am. <laughs> All right, guys, I figured I'd share that with you. If you like a good korma stew, this one is amazing. Like I said, this patakas, I just get these in the regular grocery store. I wait for them to go on sale. I get the butter one. It's called butter chicken. Um, I'm trying to remember what the other one is called. I buy one of three. The creamy coconut is one of my favorites. And like I said, you can throw anything into this. Super easy. So I just buy um, chicken cutlets that are already cleaned and everything. I just snip them with the scissors, throw them into the crock pot along with the sauce and some raw sweet potatoes. I cook on high, usually about four to six hours until the chicken is really tender and everything is just soft and tender. Such a good winter stew. All right. Love you guys. Hit that like and subscribe button and don't mind my dirty stove. And as always, go out and get what's yours.